All right. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Wednesday Wake Up. I'm excited to take a dive into God's Word and figure out what kind of godly wisdom we could take with us uh, for the rest of the week. Um, this is a, a passage that uh, has a couple different points that I think we're going to chat about. Um, some of them may not seem to be related to one another, but I think in the overall scheme they will be. Um, but first, let's uh, listen to a reading of the Gospel according to John. This is John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he had heard Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he, had, when he began to recover, and they said to him, Yesterday, at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what has happened in this, in this passage? There's an official son. And one of the interesting things is that this official is probably uh, an employee, I guess you can call, or some official of the emperor or the, or the uh, of Herod uh, Antipas, and Herod was uh, one of a line that was trying to uh, make sure that there was no uprising, that any uh, any Messiah, any uh, leader would not trump him. Um, the, the Herods of old was the one that uh, ordered all the children to be killed uh, once they heard that Jesus was born. So uh, the fact that there's a possibility that this official was related to that Herod, the one that was uh, deathly afraid of being uh, overthrown by anyone else uh, is interesting because he's approaching Jesus. He's approaching maybe the one that he was sent by Herod to um, to spy, to, to find out about, uh, to see if he really was who he said he was, and if so, to do something about it. But to, to really appreciate God's word, when, it, when the word comes alive to me is when I take a look at it in context. Um, and here's where the two points come in. Uh, that I think I want to chat about today. The first point is that this this contains or is surrounded by some godly wisdom that I think is going to apply to your life sooner than later. It's it's applied to mine many times, um, and I think especially in the position that you are right now, um, you know, going off to college in a few years, um, I think it's going to happen. And that is the point that Jesus makes that. That a prophet uh, is doesn't doesn't have honor in his or her own hometown, and that may sound strange. I might be calling you a prophet, but the 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 concept applies, uh, and I think you'll see what I mean there. The second point is that I believe that this passage tells us to not underestimate our spiritual sense. I mean, we're our spiritual selves. I mean, we are made in God's image, so we have a human side. We have a a divine side. It's in, and that's that spiritual side, that indescribable inside of us uh, thing that connects us to God, that connects us to one another, uh, that allows the Holy Spirit to to give us those nudges to to speak to us. And it's that spiritual side that I think we often underestimate and we often put aside and just depend on our human side and the things that we can see and touch and experience. Um, but I believe that this passage is a good example of someone who has invested everything into his spiritual side, into his spiritual gut, so to say. So what happened here? This, this official came to Jesus because his son was dying. Someone obviously very precious to him was about to die. And he traveled about 20 miles uh, to meet Jesus, to try to get Jesus to come back 20 miles to his house to, to heal his son. But like I said, it's, it makes more sense if you put all of this into context. And this happens right after Jesus was in Samaria with the woman at the well. You know that story, right? He 
this woman came in the, in the heat of the, the midday to go get water and she's from Samaria. And, and Jesus said, if you, if you uh, know, know the water I provide, you'll, you'll never thirst again. Um, so he was in Samaria and then he went to Cana. Um, and in between that is this little nugget of, of godly wisdom that says, um, it says, when the two days were over, he went from that place, meaning Samaria, to Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. So what does that mean? So check it out. This is Samaria, right? And this is Nazareth, and this is Cana. So in order to go from Samaria to Cana, he had to pass right by his hometown. So why didn't Jesus stop in his hometown? It's pretty weird, right? In other words, if if you were off in college, um, let's say down south, let's say Bailey's down in Virginia, and she comes home or she travels north, and what would happen if she went straight from Virginia to her friends in Massachusetts and didn't even stop by in little old Connecticut to see her parents? It's a little strange, and that's what Jesus did. The reason for that is that in his hometown, he was just the punk kid. He was just the, the carpenter's kid. He was just someone who everyone knew and everyone discounted and everyone said, well, you know, you are, you know, I, I know who you are. I've seen you in the synagogues. I've, I've, uh, I've, I went to school with you. Um, you know, that Jesus character, he's just a normal guy. So in his hometown, he had no respect. The reason why I say that that's going to apply to you uh, someday is that pretty soon you're going to be leaving home. You may be going to college and, and you're going to come up with your own um, ways of doing things, your own decisions as to when you go to bed, as to what you eat and, and when you eat and, and what friends you associate with. And you're going to develop into the person that God has intended you to be. Um, but when you come home, you, you're still going to be the kid that grew up in that house. And it'll be a hard thing to try to navigate um, to say, well, you know, I am an independent person. I am my own person, but yet you're still uh, a child of your, of your family. Um, and that's a hard thing. And it sometimes is a hurtful thing, but it's something that you're going to figure out. And the reason why I bring it up is that during those hurtful times or during those confusing times, just know that Jesus felt it too. In his own hometown, being born in a miraculous way, doing miracles, yet he still wasn't respected in his own hometown. And that's, that's I think, a, a godly truth that, that uh, may apply to your life. And I hope that uh, when it does, you just realize that Jesus felt it too. Second thing, the second point is um, this, this idea of trusting in your spiritual self. Um, there was a, uh, I just looked this up. I knew there, I thought there was something in the Bible and maybe there is, it's going to relate to it, but there's a French philosopher. Um, he's also a Jesuit priest and he, he had this quote and I'm just going to read it. It says, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So what does that mean? I think that means that, that, that identifies that spiritualness inside of us, that, that connection that we have to the divine, that, 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 that desire that we have inside of us to restore that connection that uh, we had with, with God in the beginning and was, was injured in, um, in the Garden of Eden. And I think that this official truly showed his spiritual self. He, if you think about it, his son is something most precious in the entire life to him was dying. And he would do anything in the world to try to save his son. He would go to any doctor. He, he was an official, so he had he had wealth. He had means to do whatever, and so he traveled, maybe with a whole caravan of people, twenty miles to go get Jesus to come back to his house. His plan was to bring Jesus back, um, and think about where Jesus is coming from. He he passed right by his town. He passed by a whole bunch of people that didn't respect him. He realized that that people just wanted him for his miracles, for his for his magic shows and, and, and they didn't understand who he truly was. And then here comes this official, this, this, this guy of means that says, Hey, you need to come high to my house to go heal my son. But there was something that made Jesus stop. He could have just looked at him and said, you know, you don't believe you just want to show or you, you just want proof or, 
you know, you, you don't respect me for who I am. You don't understand that I come from God, that I am the son of God, that I, I could be here to save you if you just believe. There was something that showed up in this man's face that made Jesus say, he, he gets it. The spiritual sense is, is, is showing in him. And what, what happened? Jesus didn't go back 20 miles to his house. He just said, your son will be healed. Your son will get better. And this guy, who would have done anything in his world to save his son, stopped pursuing a solution. And he just said, okay. Completely trusting in not his human side, but in his spiritual side, in the things that can't be described. He just, he saw Jesus and he says, I believe in who you are. Please help my son. And as soon as Jesus said, your son will be healed, he said, okay. Essentially, I believe you. And he started to travel 20 miles back to his house. And then obviously the story reveals that, that his son was healed as soon as Jesus said he would be healed. So here's a lesson for us to, to not discount our spiritual side. We are spiritual beings living a human experience. We're not just humans striving to be spiritual, striving to understand God. Yes, we're trying to understand God, but, but we don't have to do anything more to have that connection. It's already inside of us. We're already spiritual beings tied to our creator. Um, and I think all too often we, we tend to put that aside and say, well, no, I need, to, I need to depend on my human side, on the things that I could prove, on the things that, that I could experience myself and not trust like this official did that, you know what? There's something inside of me that connects me to this Jesus, that connects me to my God, that connects me to my son, that allows me to trust 100% that what Jesus says will happen, that when I put all of my trust, all of my worries, all of my, my, my burdens in Jesus' hands, he has it covered completely. And what's wild is that while our, our bodies, maybe not in your case, maybe like in your 20s, maybe is when you're in your physical peak, right? But after that, our bodies deteriorate. Your knees start to, to bother you from all those years of, of, of sports or whatever. Um, but our spiritual sense continues to grow and, and get stronger while our physical bodies do what they do. And if you think about some of the, the, the faithful pillars in, in your life or in your church, I, I keep on going back to Dolores again. I bet you she'd be the first to say that, that her body now is not the same as what it was when she was in her 20s. But also, I bet you she'd admit that, that her spiritual self was not the same now as what it was in her 20s because her spiritual self has grown over those years, grown in trust, grown in, in relationship with God. And that's why it's so easy for her right now to depend so fully on that spiritual sense to say, she told me, she said, believing is easy. Faith is easy. Why is that? Because she depended year after year, day after day, struggle after struggle on her spiritual self. And that's why her spiritual self is so immense, so strong right now. and so bound with her creator. We have that same ability. I think we look around at people like Dolores, other pillars of faith, and, and they have invested time just like this official into trusting that spiritual sense that, that you can't put your finger on, um, but is just as real as our human sense. Okay, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the creation that you made in each and every one of us for this time together to listen to your word and to understand maybe what it is that you'd want us to take with us uh, for the remainder of the week and for the remainder of our lives. Remember your wisdom and your plans for us and how and how you made us into spiritual and human beings to to understand our world around us but yet to understand you please let us strengthen our spiritual side to get closer and closer to you so that uh, we can have that faith that we can't put our finger on but it's just as real we pray this in jesus name amen